Hey, Hal here. Just wanted to tell you we're excited about uh, our partnership with Minus 33. Minus 33 specialized merino wool base layers for outdoor enthusiasts from tops and bottoms to hats, socks, gloves. And our gear is going to keep you warm and comfortable no matter what adventure you're on, especially those big woods ones. We're a fifth-generation family owned and operated, a New Hampshire wool and textile manufacturer. They have over 106 years of wool and expertise, and they started manufacturing wool and socks, the Mountain Heritage ones, in New Hampshire in 2018 with the idea that a quality product, affordable pricing, and can be worn and loved from season to season. No matter what uh, your experience level or skill is, so no one should feel uncomfortable or ill-prepared in the outdoor community. Having a reliable gear is one of the first steps towards a lifetime of passion or whatever activity it is. And my caveat to that is, is you got to wear your woolies. Caught is death. This is the Big Woods Bucks podcast. Come explore the Big Woods and Timber in North America with your host, Maine Master Guide and Deer Tracking Expert, Hal Blood. Listen to Hal and co-hosts Lee Libby and Joe Cruzy as they unlock the secrets of Big Woods whitetails. Each episode will provide valuable insights in the tried and true system Hal has used for the last 40 years to scout, locate, and hunt mature Big Woods bucks. Listen and laugh as the crew discusses Hal's legendary adventures and learn how to apply a lifetime's worth of lessons from the Big Woods to your own hunting and outdoor adventures. Welcome to the Big Woods Bucks podcast. I'm your host, Hal Blood. Once again, we're down here at Parlin in uh, kind of a cold, wintry morning here in December. Sitting here with Joe. He's got the fireplace going for us. Yeah, I had to run in and get that going. It was pretty chilly in here this morning. Yeah, old guide Mike. Yeah, it's cold in here. Yeah, are you here, though? I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, you woke me up. Yeah. Got a new co-host today, his <coughs> grandson Rylan. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 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 How you doing, <laughs> Rylan? Didn't Joe just say no one-word answers? <laughs> Grammy gets after him for that. She'll write a <laughs> she'll write a text to him. You know how women do about nine miles long, and he'll answer, "Yep." <laughs> he gets so mad. <laughs> He goes, he's just like you. <laughs> I was going to say oh. that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. He, that means you're a thinker, right, Rylan? You take it in more than you spit it out. So, anyways, hunting season's wrapped up pretty much. I mean, it is in Maine. Well, they got, no, they got a few more days down. Yep. I know, uh, I know Lee, good Lee and Steven are still hunting. Yep. And uh, Lee told me he ended up guiding more than he probably should have because he ain't hunted much on his own. But I think, I think he's got this week. He's he's guiding it. this week too, but he's carrying a gun. Yeah, he's got well, a guy yeah. that uses a regular guy that's coming for a few days. But yeah, he's carrying his gun, and and Stephen still is. So anyway, good luck to them. And uh, good conditions for the last for the oh, end of it. Oh yeah, this week he has been been good yeah perfect absolutely perfect out there yeah so we got to congratulate joe because he shot his buck last night with his smoke pole yep yep down to the wire yeah kind of yeah what, what right. tell us i only it. i only <laughs> hunted two days this year so yeah right <laughs> <laughs> more like two months yeah uh, well, that's the way it rolls. Oh, I tell people sometimes you can't do anything right, and sometimes you can't do anything wrong. That's just, it's just the way it rolls. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a, I mean, it's been an awesome season. I mean, from the beginning, from yeah, moose to guided hunts and deer, everything. It's been, it's been good. Um, it's. Uh, you know, as the month drags on, and I hunted a lot, it's uh, and guided some, 
as well. So it's, it's, uh, you know, you get towards the end and, and it's definitely, uh, it's easier for some guys to kill bucks than others and they don't come very easy for me. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's, it's just the way it is. It's, it's, uh, you know, but like Hal always talks about, you just got to stay after it and keep going out and, the law of averages yeah. will catch up. That's what I don't is. care who you are. If you keep going. That's right. Stephen White, you hear that? Yeah. You keep going. <laughs> yeah. I did and forget to text Stephen about that. I told you about the day Ryland shot his there. There was two bucks went by that signpost he'd been sitting at right in the morning. Yeah, it's just yeah. It's, it's the way it is. Yeah. You know, it's – uh, but <clears throat> but anyway, I had a – I mean, I've had a great season – you know, pass some smaller bucks up and none really that I regretted afterwards at all, not taking shots at. And uh, just never uh, never had myself in a good position to kill a good one. And I, I had one day, I tracked one. I don't know what the mileage has come out to. The only thing I looked at, I don't, I don't ever turn my tracker on or anything to track mileage, but it was like, almost 30,000 steps and someone told me that was 12 miles or 13 miles I don't know what it works out to but it was a long way and never even not only did I ever never see that buck I mean he never he never stopped I mean and that was in the I think that was the fourth week um, when we got that big storm yeah so I expected at that time I definitely I mean I tracked him from daylight and yeah. he never found his dough because this year he, the way the season rolled you know thanksgiving week it rolled back all the way so it was basically more like the third week as far as the rut goes you know yeah and then muzzleloader season was more like thanksgiving week usually is it was mostly right in november still most of muzzleloader season up here anyway <clears throat> well when i when i picked this track that was that night we it was that day it was snowing so hard i think it was a wednesday where it snowed all night and it was still snowing hard in the morning and his track was snowed in so i got him out of his bed but well i didn't get him out of his bed i found his bed and he got out and walked out so i gained some time on him there but uh he fed he made scrapes he made rubs so every time you're coming to that you're slowing (laughs) down and you're thinking oh it's right here it's right here and you go all day then uh got a phone call that day that you know some some uh family stuff going on where my wife had to to go out of town so your mind comes off of it and yeah you know you're you're uh you you got to be your head in it the whole time or you know because it's when you got other things distracting you it's just not even fun right you know so so uh anyway that week was not much happening there, but uh, muzzleloader week this week, we got good snow. Last week was super crunchy. There was, I think I went out, the first day was good that Monday. That yeah. was a good day. But after that, it was, <laughs> it Froze was pretty up. tough going. Yeah, yeah. there was a few days I didn't even. Didn't bother with it. Yeah, I didn't even bother. But but uh, anyway, so so this past week, it was the southern southern area this uh, half of the state is still open and uh the deer gods i guess shined on us and gave us a bunch of good snow down south which we don't always necessarily have right for muzzleloader but um i talked to uh i talked to rick on um saturday or sunday and was talking to him about where i was going to go and and he had some ideas on some spots. He says, hey, I'll go along and and uh, we'll try to film something. So Rick and I went out Monday and uh, had a great day. We we got on a good track right off. Um, it was probably, I don't know, 8.30 or 9. So it was early enough. And uh, we, uh, we jumped him. He ran for a ways and... Uh, so we took a break, you know, and he slowed down and he got to a point where he, he stopped and went back in his back track and, and back the other way. And Rick said, 
he's within a hundred yards of us and he was pretty close to right on he might have been 150 but it wasn't long after that we were just creeping and uh i uh i saw i saw him jump and i swung he's probably 75 yards away <clears throat> i swung on him and and i'm i'm waiting like he jumped from the first bound that I saw him, he was going right to left. And so I, I put it right in the next lane that I could see, the next opening. And as I'm there in that opening, Rick's going, shoot him, Joe, he's a giant. Shoot him. Shoot him. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, you know, that's a frustrating yeah. feel. And when someone's saying shoot him and you don't see a thing. Well, he had, he had, I guess, done one of these and then back this way like that. And... You know, it was, we talked about it earlier. It was one of those situations. Rick was five feet behind me, and he can see him perfectly as he took, you know, took a leap and saw his rack and everything, and I never saw anything of him. So that was pretty frustrating. Yep. And, it, and like we talked about earlier, so many times, you know, at, when you're guiding, especially whether it's deer or moose or whatever it is, you can be sitting there looking at something going, he's right there. He's right there. Shoot him. And yeah. You can never understand why someone doesn't see it. Well, it it happens, you know. And <clears throat> so we we chased him the rest of the day, and uh, it wasn't his first time being chased. He was pretty cagey. Yeah. He was doing he was doing loops around on us, and we would come back around and see where he stood and watched us go by, and and yeah, you know. Totally. So then we tried looping on him and trying to. Use some of Garnett's trickery and <laughs> Yeah, that's how they get big in southern Maine is they <laughs> they've been chased. Yeah. yeah. Well Rick think he's chased that one a few times yeah. anyway, so um anyway, it was a great day. It really was. I that night I was you know, you think about the day and how close you were and stuff, but it's always a good time. And and especially whether it's with you or Rick or you know, hunting with matt you know guys you hunt with that have been hunting for so long and are so successful you always pick things up you always learn tidbits here and there so i enjoy that part of it too oh yeah Got um, but uh so tuesday was cleanup day i had we had that storm and i hadn't been up here so i had to come up and clean snow and be responsible and uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um I think I went out in the afternoon that day for just a couple hours after I got home. But yesterday I went back out to the same spot that uh, um, Rick and I had been trying to find that track. And I tracked one in the morning, and we had power outage here. I guess it was out in Jackman too, right? Yeah. All day. Yeah, yeah it went out at like 3 in the morning or something. Right. Yeah. So I'm as I'm hunting, I'm getting texts, you know, the power's out, so I'm – I'm calling up here and, you know, talking to Kenzie and, and with the generators and stuff. But we do have, uh, I've got one building that there's no generator. So I'm like, well, I'll hunt till noon if the power's not back on. I got to get out of here and head north. So I did. I, I got out of the woods and came home. Well, when I got home, uh, on the way home, found out the power came back on. So I was like, well. I might as well go out this afternoon and and uh, basically see if I can get lucky, you know, <laughs> yeah. doing a couple hours. So I was uh, I was walking. I was down at my place down there, and I was walking. I've got they're not they're I guess tote roads. Yeah, old going tote roads there. through that. And uh, I was just about back to the truck, and I mean I was it was right at just a couple minutes before you know legal shooting and uh he was out in the road he came out and he walked up the tire rut and turned sideways and <laughs> that was it did he see you nope 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 i don't think he had any idea was there but then i thought about it afterwards because he was so close to where my truck was whether he saw my truck and that's what turned him but i don't know it was kind of around the corner there but yeah anyway i uh i shot him right there and that was it better to be lucky than good huh yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's my mantra <laughs> i said i'll take it 
Yeah. So it it's uh it is a crazy thing. I mean, we had we had both extremes this year, right? We we have Stephen that that thirty six years or thirty seven years he's been at it and hasn't got his buck yet, and we're all pulling for him. Yeah. And then you get the guy's first year this year. I I forget what was uh. uh I think his that kid's name was Stephen. I think <laughs> his first year. He's yeah. in the woods, what, less than two hours open a day? Yeah. No snow, <laughs> I don't think, that week. No. 212-pound 10-pointer, you know, yeah. just like that. You just never know. Yeah. You know, but I know you you have to be out there. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's how it goes. But, uh, yeah, really fortunate. Just a just a great season overall with everything, you know, a lot of fun. Got to guide your second cousin twice removed. or <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Greg had a great time with Greg for the week and must have he said he's coming back right yeah that's what he told me but he might have been he might have had a couple drinks then and maybe he's gonna change his <laughs> mind I don't know <laughs> oh. he might rethink it but maybe I'll see him at family reunion this summer yeah yeah but no that was that was a fun week too so yeah anyway good season time for sheds now yeah. You told your story on the last one, didn't you, Mikey, about your buck? Yeah. No. <coughs> no? I haven't, I haven't been here. No. Oh, no, yeah, okay. I didn't think so. Mikey, get your buck when? The first? I got him uh, Monday of the second week. Uh, I had taken I had taken a couple of weeks off. I guided the first week, and I had to guide the third week. Yeah. And I had the second week to hunt. Oh, and, yeah. We uh, went back to bare ground. That's right. Yeah, I was, yep. yeah. It was cold. It was plenty cold. It was, you know, right. Good weather in that in that sense, but we had the snow was gone, huh? And it was a uh, pretty crunchy. And when I was guiding the first week there, I I called in three bucks on Friday. Then Saturday, I don't know, the weather went sour. Saturday, I think the first week, because we for some reason the guy he didn't want to. George didn't want to go out Saturday much. So anyway, I said, well, you know, Monday, I'm going to, it's just going to be a cold, frosty day. I'm just, I'm going to go back up where we, where we called in those bucks on Friday. It was funny. We, we called in three, three different bucks and never saw either one of any of them. They just came in close enough to hear them. Yeah. And then you'd hear them. And then, then they'd be over here. Then they'd be over here. Then they'd be gone. huh? So, uh, but I figured, well. I I'd, I'd found a I'd found a signpost and a bunch of rubs, and I didn't I didn't even know they were there. I I'd, I'd found them in, when I was in there in the snow, and so that's where I went Monday. I went up in there, and when I was when I I had to walk in about a mile, so I was I was I walked in in the dark. Well, I could hear them, I could hear them chasing up up in the maples there. Yeah, and it was a big big steep bluff. The, like the deer don't even go up it. One of those, you know. So I knew I could hear them. They were just trimming the edge of that, staying on the bottom. Well, about maybe a quarter of a mile up the road, there was a there was a place where the the bluff came down to the road, and it was like a pinch point almost. Yeah. And that's where that signpost and everything was. And I said, "Geez, they headed that way." And so I. My fat old ass up that road about a hundred miles an hour, and I get up there and I got ahead of them. But they kind of stopped chasing. I could I heard I heard dog oh, oh, bleat, and then I never heard that again. They I could just hear them once in a while. So I tried to get a little closer to them, and then they kind of fizzled off. So I waited a while and I grunted, and then nothing. So I moved a little closer and I grunted again and. Then I could hear one walking. Walk, come right down into those that signpost. I was about 80 yards away. And then finally I see him in there. And I could see him, then I couldn't. And then I see an antler. And I saw, I thought I saw a really good antler at first. <laughs> <laughs> you know where this story's going. But <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so he come down into those, those rubs and kind of hung around and I waited and waited and waited and he, he never grunted but he, he, he wanted to hang around and then 
finally he come down close enough where he got in some of that that swamp grass, you know, and he started rubbing. And uh the old three sixty buck hammer. He, I I kept the I kept the buck horns on mine just for the season. Yeah. And he got started rubbing that tree and I, I shot him. And then he started and then he, I thought he went right down. The next thing he I see him kind of trying to go go back the other way and I shot him two other times. It turned out I hit I hit him I hit him one of the other shot because he went right down after the third shot. And uh yeah, so I went over and there he was and he didn't he wasn't he weighed one sixty something but he didn't have much for horns. But I was I was real happy. It was a it was a good hunt, you know. When, yeah. when you don't have snow you gotta adjust things like, you know <clears throat> like you know, Kev used to say. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I mean I was real happy with it and I, I change things you change things up you know when you don't have the snow you know you, you you might go to the call you might just sit for a while you do what you do what you got to do but i mean i don't i don't i the frozen leaves people always say oh it's frozen leaves it's noisy out there i, I go for that i like that i like the hunting that stuff <coughs> that, that i remember that day because i remember getting the text from you that was the first day that greg and i hunted together it was bare ground and i think we saw five deer that day in the spot where we were so they you know it was bare ground and it was loud but it was it was a great day yeah well, they well, were moving they're in the woods yeah they're not yeah. back at camp no they don't Why disappear not? there ain't that's what i was telling people yeah you know, just because it's a bad day or stay home with fishing you know people think oh it's lousy conditions well, what do you think the fish left <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so um uh, i was i was real pleased with that hunt that's and it was a good hunt, and that was one of the reasons I shot him. I said, "You giving me a good hunt here, you know." And I, could, when I was, when I was waiting to shoot him, I could hear other deer coming. They were coming, you know, out yep. to the road, right out to me. When I shot, they those other deer must have been right there because I, I could hear them go, you know. Yeah. But because uh, I was wailing three of them shots real quick with that with that buck hammer, you could that thing can hammer them, boy. Yeah. <laughs> that that was a little bit of a regret I had is I didn't shoot one with my buck hammer because that I carried it all season and and I did really like it. I mean as far as carrying and and uh you know everything about it I I was hoping to shoot something with it obviously but maybe yeah. next year. And when I guided that first week that the fella he he told me he says carry that buck hammer go ahead carry that with you he says hunt a little bit you know you know how that goes you can't hunt when <laughs> no. you when you when you guide and your mind is not with it you know yeah. i mean we saw lots of deer and in you know but i just you know we had the wicked conditions there too that first week and i'll tell you i wanted to go you know but yeah but uh so that was the first day i actually hunted with it was that monday and it you know, one hour is all it lasts. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, it comes you know, easy for some guys. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. And it never comes easy for me, Joe. I know. I mean, Hal I'm will just tell you that. Yeah. yeah. But well, I mean, it was something I was, to say for age and experience, you That's know. right. <laughs> well, we talked about that, you know, my client and I the first week, because he was 80. Yeah. And we were talking about how we, as we've got older, it seems like we see more deer now. Slow you down know, a little bit. Yeah, I, I must something to do with that, huh? But yeah, uh, yeah so I, I was I was up in there quite a ways, and but I had cell coverage. You know, you know where I shot the buck. That's you know you're up there quite a ways, where we dragged that small bull out. Yep, I shot him just up the road. From oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I grabbed the phone and I hit you guys first, and then. Uh, and then I hit, because I hit Cam, and then I hit Marie. Marie, my wife, uh, she's the cook at the at the school here in town. So I I text her. I says, uh, "Have you have you seen uh, Cooper or Cody?" And she goes, uh, "Yeah, Coop just went through the breakfast line." I says, "Tell him I got a buck to drag." <laughs> So then it wasn't two minutes. I got a text back from from Coop. I'll be right there. 
<laughs> so I, good I, reason to skip school tell the principal I got it. yeah but you know folks you guys that listen to this you where do any of you live where you can call the local high school and get a kid to drag you dear I mean, there aren't too many places like that no. you know that was a funny that video was great that you did it yeah. <laughs> that night we were sitting here at the bar all hanging out after the day laughing watching yeah. that so yeah so yeah, I called the kids and they came up and dragged my deer out for me. And that was, uh, yeah. Where else can you do that? Yeah. But in the big woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told my story. Oh, my one hand. I can't remember. We, we, we were doing. I don't. No, if you talked you about did. it on a podcast. When huh. did we do the po last podcast at the lodge? Was it? It was after the th after the second week. It was yeah. It was after you got your deer because oh yeah, I we talked told the about story it. about the gate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. I thought I did. Oh yeah, because John was here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my dragger. Yeah. <clears throat> Ryland, right. you're gonna tell Ryland's story. Yeah. He's Ryland, be the Ryland, dragger. Right, yeah, he's you're gonna be he's the dragger. Pretty good at it. He's getting there. How do you feel about that? Because you know, Pupper ain't dragging much longer. Oh. I don't know if I take that, Hal. <laughs> well, no, let's be honest here. You know, he's not going to be able to drag much longer, Island. This is going to be you. You're going to, you'll be dragging with one hand and holding his drool cup with the other hand. <laughs> you know what a drool cup is? <laughs> I bet you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. So that's, that's what you got to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. In between shooting bucks. <laughs> Yeah, so that was I got mine on Saturday the second week. So then we had we had pretty much it was bare ground. We had a little snow up high. So I told Ryland, I said, "You get your schoolwork done the beginning of the week. We could see the snow was coming for that Wednesday, you know, day before Thanksgiving." So you worked on your schoolwork, didn't you? Got that? No, well, we that was fourth fourth week then, right? Was it the middle of the fourth week then? Uh, fourth third. week. That was the day before Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We then missed yeah. the third week. We went a couple times the third week, I think. Was that when we went to the triple sign post? Mm. The third week? Yeah, you sat that week, I think, actually. No, that was the second week, honey, because we, we went there. We went there before, uh, bef just before I shot mine, because I remember we see that little buck in there, and then I seen a buck the next day by myself, and then the next day I... Shot mine, but it, we did go a couple times the third week. I think we went. I think we went back down in where you and Lars went. We had we went in there and it was pretty much bare ground. We tromped around. Hey, Hal here. Finally got some new good news for all you. Our jackets are finally in. It's been a long process, but we got them done and got them right with all our new features and stuff in them. So. Uh, some of the new features we added was a game pouch in the back you can access from inside with, with dividers in it. It's just like the original one. Mine's the original one, not the new one. It's got your slash front pockets where you can get in and get at your GPS or whatever you carry in your front ones. They're all lined with, the pockets aligned with uh, Microtech fleece so it's nice and Nice and warm on your hands when you put it in. Microtex fleets. Uh, got your slash pockets here. Just 100% wool, virgin wool. Uh, I think they call it's 100% virgin wool, but it's 80, 85% wool with some nylon to make it stronger. Tight woven, and uh, the vest. I don't have the vest on it. The vest snaps on, your orange cape comes with it. And uh, we're gonna have the green checker jackets come in 22 ounce wool. And we have plain green, forest green, same color as our pants that are coming. And those are in uh, 18 ounce. A lighter wool so you can have a three season jacket or a four seasons jacket and uh, the pants will be coming in a couple weeks and 
just in time for deer season. So get them ordered up and we'll get them shipped right out to you. Good luck on the trail. Hey, Hal here. I want to talk a little bit about uh, our partnership with Onyx Hunt. Um, I've been using it for a while now, and if anybody knows me, they know I'm not a very techie person, but the Onyx app is really, it's a real time saver. I remember the days when we poured over topo maps everywhere we was going to go and stuff, and I don't, uh, I don't do that quite as much anymore. Where it's really helped me is, is uh, scouting, you know, whether it's deer scouting, a moose, or even turkey hunting in the spring, which I do. It, uh, it really helps out. I don't have to spend as much time running around the truck burning up the gas. I, uh, I'm just basically using my Onyx. Got it on my phone. Don't even carry a GPS anymore. So uh, I just download the areas where I'm going to be hunting, whether it's up north moose hunting. And, and uh, I use it mostly on the uh, satellite imagery. I like to see the, the cuts and the clearings and the turkey hunting, the hidden fields and stuff, but uh, everybody's using it now from the game wardens to the to uh, land surveyors and and uh, just a great tool. And uh, with our partnership with with uh, Onyx, if you use a code BWB, you're going to receive 20% off on your first premium or elite memberships. And you just go to onyxmaps.com slash hunt. You'll be glad you did. Good luck on the trail. Hey folks, Rick Levy here from Big Woods Bucks. I'm here today to tell you about our new packs. This is our new small pack, which the first time I saw it, Chris showed it to me and I said, that's the Nuna because that's the perfect pack if I'm getting on a buck track at noon. And uh, it, it, it'll hold the sandwich, your water, a little bit of gear. It's uh, virgin wool. Made in USA, waterproof resistant, has a liner on the inside. Um, it is a great pack. This pack, this is our newest large pack, which um, when I used to carry the older pack, I always wore suspenders because it bothered my hips a little bit. So we designed one with shoulder straps and this is a great pack. It takes the weight off your hips, puts it onto your shoulders, it's got a uh, GPS pouch right here in the top you slide in. Same deal, it's, it's water resistant on the inside, got that liner. Um, it's a perfect pack. So I go to bigwoodsbucks.com, get yours today, and I'll see you on the track. As you all know, Big Woods Bucks is devoted to promoting the best equipment for tracking and still hunting the Big Woods. Part of that equation for success is the sights that sit on your hunting rifle. We've chosen Skinner Sights as the company to produce our custom-built BWB Tracker Series peep sight. It's constructed of solid steel, has our custom ghost ring, and was co-developed by some of the best trackers in the world. To get yours, go to bigwoodsbucks.com and click on the Optics tab. We're having fun today, ain't we? <laughs> <laughs> we had a power outage. That's why you can't see any of us for the first half of this podcast i don't know the producer didn't pick up on it or something there so we're, everybody's in the dark for a while yeah that'll work it's yeah. old school it's like yeah. we used to do it yeah <laughs> but from now on you'll be able to see rylan tell his story about his buck first buck first buck tracking it's pretty cool yeah, it is cool so anyways Go ahead, Rylan. What's your story? Day before Thanksgiving? Snowed the night before? Yep, we got snow Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. We were looking, went to a spot to look for a track from the road, but we never ended up cutting one because was, snow was coming down pretty hard. So we went to a place we were going to try to find a track anyway. We went about a mile and cut a track and just got done doing our filming there and he started jumping so we only went about 50 yards and he was already started jumping so I guess he ended up seeing us before we even got on his track 
That was two points connecting, right? Yeah. Stumbled right onto him. But turns out he already knew we were there. Yeah. So we never waited or nothing. We just sort of poked along because we knew we were right behind him. He wasn't too startled, I don't think. Ran a little ways and he started walking, so we were just kind of going slow. And he ended up crossing a stream and was it then when he picked up his doe? Yeah, it went up on them bluffs and shagged a doe out, remember? Yeah. We were crawling up in that thicket on the bluff and then there was a doe would run out of there. And um, he went across another stream, but he ended up getting in the stream and turned around and went back. So we were trying to figure out what he did there. And anyways, we figured that out. We never ended up crossing that stream. And um, we were going through this thick little knoll there and we we're on his track and I looked to my side and there's two guys standing there. <laughs> it, and the first one had a Big Woods Bucks jacket on, didn't he? Yeah, so I figured <laughs> I figured we probably knew him. <laughs> and they ended up being some of the clients from the lodge. And yeah. they were on another buck that ended up being a doe. But nobody was finding a track that day, so the first track they saw they ended up taking. So our deer end up going together for a little way, so all four of us <laughs> followed them. I didn't, I didn't hear that part of it. Yeah, we looked like the March of the Penguins. <laughs> four, four, four guys on two deer <laughs> heading up the hill. Uh, yeah, and they, end, they kept acting like they were splitting off from each other, and they'd come right back to each other. So they end up saying, well, we don't want to bother you guys. So they went off and did their own thing looking for another track and um, we kept following them. I don't, I don't think it was half an hour later, we were coming down into this bowl type thing and a bigger track crossed paths with ours, an older track. At the signpost area, I Yeah, pretty big track, but it was what, close to halfway full of snow? Yeah, had some snow in it, but we yeah. knew it was made in the morning, so we were right. go we were golden. It was a good big track. Any track that day was a track to follow. And so we beat feet on that one, and like the other one, he kept bringing us up into these knolls that were like rabbit thickets. <laughs> Yeah, that's fun, isn't it? Was, it? Yeah, <laughs> especially when they're loaded with snow like that. Yeah, and um, he ended up bringing us up on this knoll where there was a bunch of other deer, and I had like a party in there. And at that point, there was multiple different bucks and a bunch of different does, so we weren't even really following one specific deer. We were kind of just they were all going basically the same way, so we ended up following them. We had to cut that circle to get something coming yeah. out, remember? Yeah, there was, what, two or three good tracks. Yeah. But we, one was bigger than Yeah. The one the when we come out, we come out on that big one. Yeah. And another one. Remember, there was two bucks. Yeah, a big one and a medium-sized one. Right. And there was, the dough was dripping some blood, so we yeah. thought that was a pretty good sign. So by then, it was close to 12. I was getting hungry, and I was talking about having a sandwich. He goes, no, we're right behind these deer. He's got a <laughs> slave driver. Yeah. Yeah. I was. All I did was he's in the lead, and all I was doing was kind of giving him the pace, speed up or slow down or whatever, and watch out, right? Yeah. You come down, he's learning. You come down off them knolls, you got to look everywhere and before you step out in the open and the important lesson was one step at a time creeping up over the knolls when you're right behind them like that, right? Yeah. So we didn't eat a sandwich. So we didn't eat our sandwich, and I was like, oh, okay. 
So we kept going and wasn't long after that. Um, I stepped out in the skid trail and I was kind of just on the edge of it. And I seen his back end there. And so I kind of, I was like halfway drawn with my gun and he could see that I was, I seen something there. So I took another step out in the skid trail and he was kind of standing there looking at me quartered away. So uh, you took another step and you could see him standing there. And yeah, I couldn't see him at first. I, I knew he was tensing up like he, see, I knew we see him, but I didn't, I couldn't see him so I took a step so I could be a little higher and and then I could see his face looking back I guess he turned around so I I bleated real quick figuring that he was with a doe you know it was two bucks with a doe and so uh I gave him a bleat there to hold him and yeah so he was he caught our attention there he, he heard you there so he was standing right there, facing us. So I finished swinging up and pow. As Pup would say, he dropped like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> 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 sort of got back up and hobbled a little ways. So I started kind of getting up there pretty fast make sure he wasn't going to get away and the time we got up there he didn't make it too far and like about 20 feet yeah <laughs> tried to get up a little hill there and didn't make it time but, we got up there he had a couple of kicks left in him and yeah well we see the other one jump up over that bank the yeah. other the other buck the he shot the smaller of the two and the other one we see jump up over the bank. I thought it was the I thought it was when he shot at I go, you get I'm thinking he's getting away, he get up, you know, because he drops so quick. But it was the other buck bolted up, jumped up across the skid road up there. I didn't realize that till afterwards. I went up to get some sticks to have a fire to toast our sandwich, and I can see they're running that big running track going up over there. <laughs> Oh, so you didn't see the deer, you just saw the truck? Oh, no, I saw the deer. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. we see it. I, but I was, you know, I was thinking it was this one. Uh, well, you know? Right, 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 right. Yeah. I think I saw it, too. I wasn't really sure what was going on. Yeah, it was a little confusing there because mm. his buck dropped, and then it kind of just it kind of just half-assed, kind of jumped over a boulder there, and it was a bank in there, went up. and He then, started up the hill. And, and then, then he, yeah, he kind of got against the bank, and, and then I see this buck jumped like nothing was wrong with it up over the bank so i said get down there quick so we kind of hurried down there and, and then his buck's just laying there kicked like one more time with his leg and he was done you know yeah was you excited about that oh yeah we look over. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Super <laughs> excited. That's Ryland's excitement. That's yeah. as he say as he gets right there. <laughs> Every time I call my mom or something or I call Matt, they're always like, Well, he sounds so excited. <laughs> <laughs> He's a flatliner like me. <laughs> well, I I will say that picture and Leah said the same thing. She said, I don't think I've ever seen how so happy in a picture before with a deer. <laughs> yeah. You could tell you were pretty ha happy and excited in that picture, which you should be. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good day. I was probably more excited than he was. Yeah, that happens. That happens. So After I, I shot him, we ended up looking over, and the doe was still standing there. Yeah. Didn't know what was going on. She ended up being, she was just bedded right next to him there. She got up after i shot and just took a couple bounds and just she, stood there she went down the the other buck went up over to the right and she just bounded down into the left down in the softwood there and was standing there looking around like what's going on you know yeah 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 i was pretty excited rylan you did a good job with that yeah the, you old, did. the old 300 awesome. put the old 300 savage. pump to use there another one shot deal <laughs> You're probably not excited for next year, are you? We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll test my luck. <laughs> yeah. You going to try to get a bigger one next year? I'm going to try. Yeah, okay. But this is a pretty nice buck. Yeah. yeah. 
It was a real nice buck. What did he weigh? 159. How many points? Seven. Seven points. Fourth week. Yep. Broke his brow. One brow point kind of broke off. Looks like around velvet I time or something. I don't know if it was broken. I mm, I don't think it even. I just don't kind think of a it nub grew. There. It was kind of a nub there. Yeah. Yeah. But it was rounded, so it wasn't like freshly broken or anything. No, no. It wasn't fresh. Yeah. Just didn't grow, huh? Yeah. Well, can't throw them back. Got to take it. I yep. saw a rack and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a pretty nice first buck, you know, Bob. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, especially yeah. how you killed it. That's what it, I remember that day. Uh, after that fresh snow, I was I was cursing the scope that day. Yeah. If I I had had <clears throat> I had the uh, Skinner Express sight, so I could have take just taken my scope off, put my pack, but I never planned on using my peep, so I didn't. And I was kind of rushed before season there getting things together, so I never shot it. So I didn't want to take a chance of oh, taking the scope off. In, yep. Otherwise, that scope would have been in my pack, and that's the whole reason for that express sight because it was miserable that day with the scope, just yeah. fighting it. And My muzzleloader setup, I've got that setup that I made where both of them open with the button, and that's a big help, but I can't do that on – uh, right. the other scope because of the difference in the size of the objective objective and reticle right but the well, pump is nice yeah next year rylan you probably the only reason i have to go is because you ain't you won't be 16 yet right yeah so i'll just have to follow along and do what you're telling me to do <laughs> <laughs> we'll see <laughs> you haven't invited him yet have you no he invites me <laughs> yeah nope that was the highlight of my season I'll tell you you see that comment there on your post when you said you probably won't need Papa anymore one of the comments was like uh, it's better when it's need or want than need it's oh, better yeah. when you, he wants you not needs you yeah probably true sound wisdom there yeah and then we had a pretty good drag right yeah yeah i got my onyx out because you, did, you didn't think it you thought it was going to be quite oh, a drag it was in a bad place it was down in these steep bluffs and i'm thinking you know i'm thinking to get out the road i'm like we got to go like either over or all the way around these bluffs and like and i'm like I knew there was another stream down below, and and there was a road that went in part way, and I th still thought we were downstream more, and I'm like, well, it's all going to be all alders and crap, you know. So I said, well, let me get the onyx out, and I'll look at that. I pull that up, and I look, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. We were further up stream than I thought, and uh, the road was right across the stream. Nice. It was 250 yards oh, to the road. <laughs> yeah. So we drug him. We were in kind of a these old cuts, probably, ooh, boy, they're pretty old. 10 or 15-year-old cuts, you know, old softwood cuts that got the raspberries and stuff in the skid trail. So we went down over the hill, and we had to float him across the stream, found a place that weren't over over our boots and a, kind of a wide spot water was running pretty good and we floated him across and got across the streams because it was about two miles walk back to the truck but we lucked out on that right yeah yeah we got out to the main road there and we probably did half a mile in total from the deer to where he yeah probably. picked us up there Yep, had a nice young fella from Vermont come along and says, you need a ride? Rolled the window down, and he recognized me, of course. But I said, well, yeah, we'd take a ride. I said, are you in a big hurry? And because he looked like he'd been hunting, but his hunting clothes are in the back seat and stuff. And and uh, I said, well, if you ain't in a big hurry, my grandson just shot his buck here, and if, if you just go back here a little bit, throw it in your truck and bring it over with us and he goes yeah no problem so we turned around and he drove us down 
grabbed the buck, drug him out to the road, threw him in his truck, drove us down to the Ram Charger, helped us get him up on the hood. Backed right up to the Ram Charger. Yeah, pulled him Just up on the hood. Over. Away we go. Good nice. deal. Yeah. Yeah. Got back before dark, got him tagged up. It's pretty hard not to meet somebody in the woods that won't help you. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. The Vermont guys are always awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I always give them, if I see anybody in a road, you got to give them sure. a ride. They're, of course. Usually it's the end of the day and they're walking back. You know, it's always nice to get that ride back at the so, end of the day. So the day that I was talking, that same day that I had gone so far in that buck, that was a, uh, that day wore me out. That was quite a bit of snow trudging and, I mean, I was beat. And uh, I got that text that I had to get back, so I'm, pushing to get back and i'm going i i'm trying to decide do i go straight line through the woods or there was a road that kind of went around about back to the truck and i could walk a tire rut which was a lot easier going you know yeah so i i walked the road partially and then i was like well if i cut downhill here i'll hook up with the other road and that'll be fine so i cut down through the woods and i'm just coming out to the road on a skid trail and it's a place that does not get traveled much and I see a truck go by the open. I'm like, hey, hey. <laughs> they never even looked up the skid trail. They just kept on rolling. I'm like, oh, man. It was like another mile back. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you never know. But you've no. got to take them shortcuts if you can because it saves your legs at the end of the day. Yeah. But. Yeah, so <clears throat> you got back and. Got after the end of the season. Oh, I took uh, I took Samuel C. Dalty in a uh, couple of days. He day I think it was the day after Thanksgiving. No, Thanksgiving Day. I took it was uh, Sammy. I took Thanksgiving Day. Wednesday and Thursday, right? No, Thursday and Friday. It, oh yeah, Thursday and Friday. That's yeah. right. And then yep. Lars yep. took him again on uh, Saturday. Lars had taken him Wednesday, and then he took him again Saturday. And we come pretty close both days with Sam. We got. And we were on a couple of big ones, you know, good ones, and and uh, come pretty close. We see him the second day. We see him, but it was too far to shoot. It was way off in the hardwood cut, and it's just no shot. And uh, and then he made another loop, and it was headed right off in the wrong. You know, that was a time when, like I said, that's when they were chasing around, and if they didn't have a doe, they was gonna keep going till they found one, but. Uh, yeah. Sam's got the build to go after him. He's got <laughs> his legs. Yeah, he yeah. was a little bit under the weather. He just got a. He had that mono. The kids get there. He just recovering from that. And he's got some stomach issues too. He's trying to get figured out. But so he struggled a little bit. But he's built for it. He'll get get a little weight on him and stuff. And Woody and I, maybe. we had a couple good days there. Yeah, <clears throat> we got. We get on deer. Well, you know, you can't help but get on a deer. It was so good there, the yeah. two days there. Holy cow. They were everywhere. Woody, yeah. we'd track one buck, and I'd say, let's track this one. And we'd track him. Oh, look, this one's bigger. Let's track this one. <laughs> so yeah. what, do you know what the final numbers were at Bishop's? Yeah, it was uh, 209, I think. Yeah. It was two, yeah. 209, and I didn't get the breakdown on the does. Um buck and doe and it was actually it was down a little from last year because last year it shot up to was 250 last year total and it was 200 bucks and 50 does pretty much like oh so it was less i didn't realize it was less than last it was year less but last year doubled from the year before the from yeah 10 years before it doubled it went from 125 to 250 all in one year wow and uh but I, I didn't count how many does that was. It might have been the same if there was 50 does. There was 150 bucks, which is still up quite a bit from what it's been the last. It's, it's still, it still holds that figure, one out of eight, one out of ten. Yeah. It no, was, matter what, no matter what the, the count is, I don't care if we shoot 100 or we shoot 200, it always seems to come back to about that ratio, don't you think? You mean in the does? In the no, no, for 200 pounds. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have said. But yeah, but yeah, one out of eight, one out of ten is 200 usually. You know? Yeah, it's this year it was, it used to be, it used to average like 
one out of six, I remember, right. was average. And then one year, when we had them bad winters, it was one year we had the – it was the worst I'd ever seen. It was one out of 14. And this year was – must have been it was 15 over 200 so it was one out of 10 right but there was one year that year we had the good snow it was one out of four and a half that's the best i'd ever that's, seen yeah that's the best i've ever heard but, but you it, know we're, 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 we're seems like we're easing back towards that could happen again you know oh yeah there's a lot more deer now and and we yeah. get and we're getting the weather and it's all about the weather huh you know yeah yeah one big winter though can yeah, yeah, and it but actually weren't up. not just here, but even statewide. It, the the average weights seem to be down, and I don't know why that would be. I, the only my explanation here is because I seen so many great big tracks in the woods that there was a lot of nice rack two year old deer, and people were just shooting them. You yeah. know what I mean? There was a ton of those two and a half, three and a half that had really nice racks on them, and. And they were getting shot, so the I think it saved a lot of the bigger ones, you know. Yeah, 150 um, to 165 seems to be the 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 weight that most of the deer are. I, I went down through the list. Yeah, which and, uh, which for two, two year, and a half year old deer is actually a little light too, and it's because those those late fawns that are a month late, they get a late start. Those are all making it now. You know, those are all making the winter. Used to be they didn't make the winter, so you didn't. You used to be. I remember all the two and a half year old bucks. You'd hardly ever shoot one under 170. They were 170 to 185. Is that right? Yeah. Oh yeah. They yeah. always were. And I remember even the in the yearlings, the spike horns and crotch horns, they were 120 to 150. You know, hmm. so. That's changed because a lot more of the young deer are just making it, you know, the smaller, younger fawns. So it's changing the equation. I think the biggest one was 242 or something Yeah. tagged. And then there was a, f I think there was like three that were in the, three or four in the 220s, and the rest of them were under that. Still nice deer. Plenty, yeah. and, and a ton of them in the 190s, you know. And that is a little bit surprising in the respect that, the first week was so good there was so much there was such good snow that you would have thought heavier bucks would have been you would have thought you know, that but they weren't many heavy ones moving that first no, they weren't they weren't they, they weren't, weren't boy it was hard moving. to that first week because i hunted uh with matt there the outdoor writer and and you usually you know you can i can find a big track any day and we didn't that week you know yeah. We found a f we found a few that week, but we didn't find no overabundance. And then all of a sudden, they come out of the woodwork when the yeah. rut starts. You know, it makes you wonder where the heck they come it, from. It is crazy. I think about that all the time. Like, well, they don't move that right. at all. No. They just, just they're yeah. biding their time. They're they the don't want to be found. No, they're the <laughs> they're ones that just found. bide their time. They know when it's going to be time. And the young bucks are running all over the place. And a lot of them got creamed off that first week in the snow. Hmm. They shot a lot of bucks, but there were a lot of those two three-year-old ones that didn't quite go 200 i shot one up on the chaparral what four years ago that weighed 179 it was a two-year-old yeah because i argued with you i said that's not a two-year-old you go yeah it is yeah <laughs> yeah well, that's that was the way a, a lot of them a, used to be yeah yeah so then i got a chance to strike off the adirondacks here last week oh it's, geez I, I haven't even heard this story yet oh yeah well that's a <clears throat> see it's a I haven't gone, f I think it's been five years, maybe six, but five for sure, because I haven't been, I know, since we started doing the thing at the lodge with the hunters. I haven't been, and of course, part of that was through COVID and all that crap, but, so I haven't been. <clears throat> but um, I got a chance to go. I'd got my buck here, and, and they were going to get good snow. I I was looking at the weather there. I said, oh, I'm going to be able to go there. You know, everything's wrapped up over here. So, um, and they did. They ended up, they ended up getting some pretty good snow for that. Well, it be it's our muzzleloader week, which is it's still rifle over there. Their rifle season's five weeks, so it it goes a week after. It goes into when ours is muzzleloader season. But anyway, so I went over and stayed with. Uh, uh, Joe Donito and Steve Grabowski there, and uh, 
Steve Feinberg, and we went over, and they had a camp all rented. I was kind of, they already had the cabin rented, and I was kind of Johnny come lately and called them up and said, yeah, I'll, I'll be over. So, But it was almost like a repeat of our Thanksgiving, day before Thanksgiving snow. We It started in the night, snowed all night, and it snowed not all night because it didn't start till late, but it, yeah, it, it, I guess it did. When I got there, it just started, but it got probably two or three inches in the night, and then it snowed pretty much all day. I think it ended up to be dependent. In the low ground, it was three or four inches, and the high ground was seven or eight inches, just right, really, and it was a light snow. And, and then it stayed cold all week till the weekend. But but anyways, I found I found a small buck track the first morning, dubbed with that for a little bit and I'm like I ain't gonna I can't bother with that so I was looking at this mountain I'd never been in there in my life I looked up this I could see this mountain up there and I looked on the on X and I said yeah that looks it looked like it had a flat up in it you know what I mean it wasn't just like a peak and then down it looked like a big flat up in this mountain I said I'm gonna go up in there there's got to be something there Took me like an hour to get up there, you know. It was steep, 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 and I had to serpentine across and ate my sandwich on the way. And I got up there and just tipped over where it started getting where you could walk because the snow was it was slippery underneath, you know, it was slip sliding my way up. And then uh, I got up in there and and uh, this and this ties into the other story. I had to do my business again, you know. So I look over, and there's a nice log right over there. And I said, I'm going to pull over there, you know. And so anyways, did my business, get myself back together, and I take like, I go like, not kidding, 20 feet, maybe 30 feet at the most, and there's a buck track right there. And it was hardly any snow in it. It was snowing pretty good, and I'm like, I must have just missed seeing it, you know what I mean? So I I get on it, and it's just kind of going along the top of the ridge, feeding on everything. I'm like, that buck. And I knew with that weather, I said, he's right here. The wind is right in my back, the way he's going. I'm like, ah, couldn't do nothing about it. I go, he's probably going to smell me here. But I just went. I'd only take one step. I was looking, all the snow's hanging in the trees, and I'm looking everywhere. I come around a spruce tree, and there's a bed laying right kind of like on this open spot there. And they're running track, and he's, I know he smelt me because I would have I had to at least see him go the way I was creeping, you know. And he went, he took mm -hmm. off, and he went up, and he turned around, and it was the craziest thing. He came up and back. He went around a knoll, and I don't know how he even missed it because he went up around, come back, and went back around, and he's back in my boot tracks, like 30 feet from where I'd done my business. He's in my boot tracks right there. I don't know how he did it. And it was pretty thick, you know what I mean? You couldn't see 30 yards in there, but so he must have just run around the right trees, and I didn't see him. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Well, when I went up, I saw another track, and I kind of, and it looked big, but I kind of discounted it. And I saw another running track, it veered off, and I go, maybe I got this mixed up here. So I said, I got to go back up there and make sure. So I went back over, and it's only like 150 yards to do this. I went up and I looked at them tracks, and what it was was there was two deer in there, and they'd just been, those, both of those deer, and I don't know what the other one was, if it was another buck or whatever, they hadn't been in probably a 200-yard square, Not maybe not even that, the whole time since it snowed. There was no old track coming out or anything there. That's where they were, just landed on them, you know. And if I hadn't gone over to that log, I'd have missed the tracks completely because I was going to go up kind of this. There was an opening there, and I was going to walk up that, but I looked over there and saw that, and they – Neither one of them ever crossed that opening. I was going to walk up. What'd you name the buck? <laughs> uh, I didn't name that one because I didn't kill him. All right. Uh, so, anyways, ended up 
it was the track and it wasn't when i saw it i knew it wasn't one of them big ones for out there but i sometimes them smaller ones even with small feet they got a big rack on them out so you got to kind of be careful because you ain't going out there to try to shoot a 200 pound buck you're going out there to try to shoot something with a decent antler you know so i went back down and and where he went down off my track he swung and just started slowed right up so i just started stepping along easy there and peeked around the spruce tree and there he was 30 i don't know 20 yards from me something like that it was a basket racked eight pointer you know took off and i went the other way and never i never cut another i cut one old set of tracks i think it was a doe and a lamb all the way back out of there and i hunted that whole mountain down and there weren't much moving and that's the way that's the day that uh that uh, joe shot his buck he shot his buck and he had the same thing he'd hunted he'd gone seven miles and never saw a deer track he said not a deer track at seven miles in that snow and he come back out to the road i think he said it was about three o'clock he hit the road and he had a little walk back to the truck and he's walking back to the truck and the track goes across the road and and it's still snowing and there ain't he said there weren't even a flake of snow in the track so he's looking down in the woods and it's a pretty good track and it, and again it's not a monster track but it's a pretty nice track for there you got to take it so he didn't even dare to go up over the bank and look he walked down the road a little bit he said and then he peeked around and he couldn't see it down as a little hardwood piece he got on the track and he caught up to it like 350 yards later oh, was feed, nice. feeding in a cut and he got it and that one that one was a it was one of them ones it was the same size buck as mine pretty much within 10 pounds but it had a really beautiful rack heavy beams oh, and gorgeous buck the, yeah it was the left side was broke off in front of the, it was an eight pointer but it was broke off it we looked it had something it either got a bug in it or something in velvet or something that damaged it made it like a little naughty thing on it yeah and he must have weakened it and then he got fighting and knocked that knocked that off but so anyways and then the next morning i went and again i don't really know the area or anything so uh we didn't we drove way back in this area and and uh Steve Gabrowski puts a bunch of trail cameras out, and he had some pretty good bucks on the cameras. So he said, well, we'll go down there. If we don't see nothing from the road, we'll strike off. And we didn't. We didn't see a track and from the road. So <clears throat> he said, you just head back in there. And he said, I'm going to head over this way. And I said, 10-4. And away we went. So I headed back in, and I had a crazy – this is one of the craziest days in a long time for me because – usually i'm not lucky enough just to bump into deer all the time you know what i mean especially bucks but i went probably a mile there was a fresh running track there was two little clear cuts in the like a skid trail that went back into them they they were there was one behind the other and a big skid trail connecting them he told me to go down through and check them cuts and then keep going so i did and there was a few tracks there nothing big and i crossed this beaver dam big big beaver swale there and i crossed on the dam and i get on the other side and it was like a kind of a hardwood flat not big hardwoods kind of little smaller ones a little thicker and i cut this big track i could see it was i couldn't see the print but it was wide stance on it and it was dragging his feet the whole way like a skier and but there was like an inch of snow because it started power snow in that morning well, i said it's got to be made you know early morning here sometime or before daylight but get on the track and i go like no more than 200 yards and he's just walking a straight line feeds on a couple of ferns and his bed's right there running track i couldn't believe it i'm like what the heck's the odds of that so i pretty much stumbled onto that one so i gave him a little time and too early to have a sandwich but i paced around there and waited and went off and he crossed another beaver swale and once he got a he kind of ran up through it he ran quite a bit you know he ran out to that and he crossed the crossed the water and then he ran up the alders a ways and 
once you get in the woods on the other side, you kind of calm down. And, but he never stopped. He went, oh, a long way, crossed a bunch of trickle streams, trickle streams in the woods, and he headed pretty much in one direction. It was kind of basically southwest, probably two miles, and then he he get on the, started he got out of that it was mixed growth and he got got kind of the more hardwood and he started feeding I'm like all right he's going to be right here now and he f pouring up ferns and he'd go a little bit and I'm looking up there at the ridge and the ridge goes up quite a ways and I know he's there and I'm I'm looking around to try to figure out how to get around it and there's no way because it's all these uh, beach whips the limbs all hung together and I said, there's no way I can get, I mean, I'll be more noisy trying to get around than just trying to stay on the track. So I said, well, <clears throat> I'll just go one step at a time and look. And from, from the time I decided that, I probably didn't go 20 steps when I saw him go. He'd just gone around this log. I could see his track going up around a log, and then there was two spruce trees, the only two I could see on the ridge. And he went up behind them spruce trees and laid down, of course. And I could, he, when he ran, I could see flicks of him going. I could never really see what he had for horns. I was just flicks. And he never came out. I, I kind of ran to the left a little bit, thinking he might kind of get free of those spruces, but he never did. He jumped right straight up the ridge. So I sat down, had my sandwich at time, and waited again. And he went another... He didn't run all that far. He ran. He got up. He got up on top of the ridge, and he kind of went along it and slowed down again, but stayed steady for another ooh, mile, another mile, same direction. And then I looked on the onyx, and it's a it's a mountain there, and it's like like a long one, kind of just a long, steep mountain. And I said, I hope he don't get down over the back of that, you know, to the south. So I started on him again, and he, I went probably another quarter of a mile or so, and he peeled right down off the back of that, the wrong direction. I look at, I look at my watch, and it's 1 o'clock. I'm like, I can't. Um, I look, and I'm three miles by straight line. That's not, <coughs> and I got to go up and down some ridges. And it's like, I looked, <laughs> I could see all them streams. And you know when you don't know what the streams are? I didn't right. know how big they were. But I know over in that country, wherever there's a stream in the woods, it's going to be thick green shit and probably like a ravine, like a gorge. There's a lot of that stuff in the mountains over there. And I said, I got to cross three or four, five streams and three ridges, and it's three miles straight line. I said, I can't go down over that ridge the wrong direction this time of day. I said, maybe I can cut a track on the way out. So, Because when I once I got over in there, after I jumped him the second time, I never saw another deer track over in there on that mountain. That was the only deer track there. Well, I headed back anyways, and I got going a ways, crossed one of the streams, and then I did see a, I saw a track with snow in it. I didn't bother. I didn't look big, and I went up over a little knoll that had furs on it. I broke out the other side, and I can see fresh tracks right there. So I stopped, and I'm looking around. I can't see very far, but I'm looking around, trying to figure out. I could see one was feeding there, and I went over and looked, and there's a bed there with a running track. I'd stumbled right onto that one. It was another buck, and it wasn't big, medium size, I'd say, or something. So I kept going, <clears throat> got out of that woods. I crossed some other streams, and... Finally made my way over into some probably five or six year old cuts. There was a few tracks in there, and I'm just, you know, I'm hunting. I'm not, I'm not running, but I'm not really poking and stuff that much. Come around the corner in that cut, around a tree, and there's another buck right there. Another basket rack buck takes off, bound down through the cut, and I'm like. I can't even believe it because I know you know what I mean I wasn't like following a track or nothing he bounded off and there wasn't like a lot of tracks there there was a few tracks in that cut so anyways I keep going 
And I finally, I get out of that old cut, cross another ravine, through some softwood, brook, stream, get up out of that, and then I finally, all of a sudden, I'm into like a newer cut, like maybe only a year or two old. And it's pretty good, you know, you can see up the skid roads, it was pretty nice. And there was a couple of fresh deer tracks there that had gone out into it. They come out of the woods and went out into the cut. And I go, I'll just follow these out into that cut. I looked on the onyx, and I could see there was a, that was a long kind of a ridge line too. And there was a gap in it, and that's where them deer went. They went right through that gap and over to the other side, and then they kept peeling the wrong direction. So I said, well, I ain't, they weren't big tracks. I said, well, I'm just poke down over here there's going to be a skid trail that goes out to the road because now i'm like only a half a mile from the road and then my truck's probably another half a mile and now it's three o'clock so i said i got time to hunt down through here and maybe i'll see a track or something here i get down to the bottom of the ridge and i can see it's the main skid road out so i'm i just started down that and i look and there's a a small bull moose laying there and out there you don't there ain't many moose you know and he stands up so i started i didn't want him to run off down through the cut you know so i grunted at him and he looked at me and he's a little nervous and he just started walking off and he stayed right in the skid road so i kind of he'd take a few steps and i would i put my gun up on my shoulders with my hands like so that it looks like antlers to him and i rocked it back and forth and i grunted and i kept going and uh and then he'd go a little bit well, finally, he got over the hill. He got out in front of me enough, and he went over the hill. And I said, there, he's not going to spook. Well, I think that was part of this deal of seeing this buck because I'm walking down that skid road right behind where he went, and it was kind of it was pretty open. I mean, there were some good openings, but there were some of them thick patches of spruce and stuff. And I just came by a patch of that spruce, and I'm looking up, there's a buck standing there about 75 yards away, right in the wide open. I mean, I couldn't even believe it. I go, here we go again, bumped into another one. So I can see from the front it looks pretty good, but you can't tell really just head-on look. But, I mean, he didn't hang around. It was like as, as soon as I stopped, I think he thought I was another moose because there's no question he just watched that moose walk up that skid trail. And he probably heard me grunting, and I come along, and he probably was just looking for another moose. And then he probably noticed I wasn't another moose because I just started come, you know, trying to swing around with the gun. And he turned a bolt, and I could see five on the left. And I said, that's pretty good. And when he got completely around, I could see he was outside his ears. I said, oh, that's going to have to be good enough, you know. So... And he was like 75 yards, and he bolted right straight away up the ridge, which probably a mistake on his part. Well, it didn't matter. He's out in the open anyway. So I gave him two quick ones, and then he, the third, the second shot, it was kind of swinging right, and then he jumped back to the left. He looked like he was kind of frigged up when he did that. And he went over the top. I fired another one when he went over the top, and. Uh, so I said, well, hopefully he's right up over the hill there. So I said, I better put my other clip in because I only got two bullets left now. So I put the other clip in, and I snuck up there, and I see right where I fired the first time. There was blood leaking out of him. I get up to the second one, and there was enough hair to make a rug out of it there. And then I just looked over, and it was looked like spray paint going down across the skidded <laughs> oh, trail there. Yeah. I and love then, that. Love that. And I could, <laughs> I could see him laying right. He didn't get... 30 yards after that second shot and uh the first one i'd hit him like right on the inside of the because i'd put it you know right on his ass going up and i hit him on the inside of the hind quarter on one side and then the second one he must have been i know I, it happened so quick i wasn't couldn't remember the shot sequence but he was obviously turned a little bit back where i got an angle on him and i'd got it behind his shoulder and I broke three or four ribs out, and that's what shaved the hair. Went right up his rib cage, but it went in, you know, and got his lung and stuff, you know. I don't know if I hit the third shot or not. It was kind of a, just a maybe a hail mary because he was. I was swinging one way, and he went back the other, and didn't matter anyway. But so that was 
kind of something bumping into three bucks and uh, four bucks. In yeah, one day, it sounds you know, like a great kinda, spot. Well, it, yeah. and, and it really ain't it. It really ain't that many deer there. You know what I mean? It's just I happen to probably stumble onto all the ones that was there. Just cra- I mean, it, and it was a long distance because it was like I said, a, it was a probably four miles through the woods because it was three miles by yeah. GPS straight line. <clears throat> so. So, yeah. so what did Steve end up killing? Because I called you guys, and you were going to help drag one out. Oh, yeah, that was kind of a funny story. So the next day, he, uh, what did he do? He started, he did find a, he found a track from the road, and it was a good one, you know, a nice good one. And then he headed in on it, and it ended up, I think it had a little, because it kept snowing a little bit. But anyways, it went up this old tote road, and then it, when it got up, it, it, it turned into, like, skid roads off the end of it. Well, he said he saw where there was a smoking fresh track coming into it. It looked like the same size track. In other words, the buck he was tracking went up, and it took a right on this skid trail. And then on top of it was a smoking fresh track. looked the same to him, so he didn't bother to go up and check it out. Didn't need to, you know what I mean? He's got a big track, fresh. So he starts along on it, and he only gets like a few hundred yards, and it gets to a ravine he's got to cross. There was a stream there, and all of a sudden he heard commotion, and there's this, this buck is coming out of the furs right at him, like head on to him running. And he see horns, and he's thinking it's the buck he's on. So he, as soon as he said he pulled the trigger, he goes, oh, no, and it was too late. And it was a it was a two-year-old, but it had a small rack. Might have been a – I don't think it was a yearling. It was, a, it was like a five-pointer, you know. But he <laughs> <laughs> kind of made a mistake like we've probably all done. I know I've done it before get caught up in that moment and you're thinking you know you're on a big track and you see horns and so that's what he got yeah no prize but he was happy to get his adirondack buck anyway well good for him yeah yeah so that was good any housekeeping stuff yeah 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 we gotta wrap up this thing and so the housekeeping is um we we're running low on jackets, right? We're running low on jackets. We got, I think we've got plenty of the solids, which I wore my solid hunting for the first time in the days it was warmer. Yeah. And it was I did great. too. I yeah. won't mind. I wore it all year. Yeah. I might have to see if I can get Chris to sign off on me getting one of those. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll run it by the board. Yeah. Okay. Just just steal one like I did. And yeah. <laughs> the 18 ounce pants I wore the entire season once I got them. I did like them. I I finally got them middle of the season and uh I hemmed them up myself cuz I don't like them long anyway cuz they just get snowballs on them. So I hemmed them actually a little short, you know, like I put them on they look like high waters, but it's perfect cuz when I tape them around my boots they're already up 6 inches from the bottom of my foot, you know, and they yeah. don't yeah, I liked them. They were comfortable and they fit nice. And I put mine to the test. I mean, I I got some miles on them and I didn't have any problems with the uh, like in the crotch wearing out. That's a lot of times. Yeah, that happens on. They got that pants. reinforcement in them, right? Yeah, they got that reinforced crotch. <clears throat> That's what we left into those. Um, I think Brian was he. Brian has that problem a lot. He wears them out, and so he was. I think he got a pair and it was going to put him to the test. He said yeah. that would be the ultimate test if, if they yeah. last with him. But, yeah. uh, well, we, I guess running out is a good problem and a bad problem. So we appreciate the, your support and business by buying the jackets. And we got more coming. It's just that, you know, we have to pick a number to get. And, and uh, I think they sold quicker than even we anticipated. There is some left, but I don't know the sizes. So... I'm sure if you look on the website, if you need one right off, you can look at the sizes. But we'll have them here going Seem- into the beginning of the year. It seems as though our hopefully our um, 
stitching issues are behind us and we're yeah we're rolling it all seems to be going really well so. yeah we've had to go to another new stitcher it's just been for us a little bit of a nightmare but it's part of growing pains and stuff more so, more so for chris than anyone yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we want it right. So the, you know, yeah. this is what happens when you want it right, and you want your customers to have the best. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm really happy with the the jacket and the pants for yeah. after running them with the season. You know, I love that. Season. Yeah, I love that green jacket. I like I say, I wore it. Guide and every day I wore it. Yeah, the, the one day on it I wore it. But yeah, geez, it's yeah. nice. Yeah, we still got packs left, and we're getting more made. So those should be pretty steady if they're out they won't be out for long and uh yeah everything's going pretty good on that front we got some uh we got a couple of nice email letters from a couple of you hunters out there that appreciate the information you're getting from the big woods crew and yeah we got one from uh helping them get their first <coughs> buck or their buck or whatever you know yeah paul paul saint amont sent us one nice nice story on his thanksgiving buck and yeah and uh said he really appreciates every all the team members input and he learned a lot and we get a lot like that it's nice yeah we do nice to hear yeah it's just kind of cool i mean all together all the different all the different guys out there making videos there's so much good content now there yeah, is coming out and it's really kind of cool just seeing the track and community and what everyone's doing yeah it's uh, definitely growing there's no doubt about it it's growing you know it's growing but you know <clears throat> i mean there's definitely pockets up here where there's there's people but i think overall it, it it didn't seem like town was super busy or anything during deer season like there's there's just no, so there's, much they're going everywhere they don't just we're not trying to get everybody to come here but there's more people getting into it even back in their home states, whether it's the Adirondacks or Michigan or Wisconsin, whatever it is, they're, they're taking up tracking a little bit more. That's what I'm getting from people with different emails and messages. And in the, in the, in the younger, there's a lot of the younger crew getting into it too. You Which know? is nice. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, uh, we got to have it because I'm telling you, if there's not numbers, it's going to go away. Yeah. A lot. I think a lot of people, especially up here, don't realize how special it is here, the land that we have to hunt on, and that we, we can just, I mean, I think that all the time when I'm out and I'll be in this beautiful piece of woods and think, anyone can come here and do it, you know, if yeah. you want to go camp in a tent and, and you can come up here for your gas money and food and go yeah. hunting like that. And Yeah, well, there's, there's not a lot of places you can do that. There's millions of acres in northern Maine that don't even get hunted, you know. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, I I want to give a couple shout cuz I live in town. You guys don't you guys are out here the whole season. And I'm in town and I run into a lot of people that stop and want to talk and they recognize us, you know, and and uh uh this season was like it seems like I just met guys like every day, you know, that wanted to talk to you hunting and Yeah. And like so, you know, I want to say just a shout out to Mark and the guys at Hollywood. You know who you are. You guys are. It's always great to run into you guys and the guys over at Big Woods there. I want to say hello to you guys for stopping and talking and saying good things about Hal and Big Woods Bucks. And uh, the guys down at Joey's Cabin, same thing. You guys, I didn't get a chance to come down and drink any rum with you, but maybe next year. But yeah, all <laughs> these guys, you run into them, and they're just great to. To, to hear what they got to say and they they're all wearing marisa's my wife and i were at the grocery store one day she goes mike look over there those guys d do you know you guide with those guys and i just looked over there and they both had big woods bucks hat big woods bucks jacket you know yeah and i go no i know i don't know those guys so they they was <laughs> they were waving you know and they come over and they talk for a while yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was just, you know, I said, uh, my wife recognized your hats there. And uh, the guy goes, I saw her staring at us. I, I thought we did something wrong, he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marie but, can give you that stare. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you she, get that all the time, don't she, you? Yeah, well, I get it. Yeah, I get it. But, you know, she's not shy, as we right. know. So she goes, yeah, you know those guys, she says. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was, uh, uh, when we were at Bishop's, when, Ryland 
got his, we were tagging his, and a young fellow pulled in in a Toyota pickup. And I can't remember his name because I'm bad with names, but he was he was one of the crew on the Northwoods Whitetails crew. And uh, he had a buck in the back of his, and he was telling me his story there. Like he said, I got in the woods at, it's one of them stories, you know, I'm like, really? I got in the woods at uh, 12 o'clock, and I picked the track up at 12.30, and I shot him at 1. It was one, wow. of, them, it was one of them stories. He has that hunt on film on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Oh, does oh, he? Really? It's up already. Check that out. Must be on that channel. But So he asked me, he asked me, uh, he said, hey, can will you come over and take a picture with me with my buck? And I go, yeah, sure. So he, he put the tailgate down there, and he goes, well, how much you think, what do you think this will weigh, Al? And I go, 160. He goes, really? And I go, yeah, he gets, I see, pretty short. So uh, I think he was a little disappointed because I heard him on the phone talking to a buddy or something. I think he was telling me he thought, thought it was like 190 or something, you know. To be uh, deceiving, I do that yeah. all the time. Well, like I, I look at the length of them. It was a short deer, you know, and, and it was a pretty nice rack. It was, was it an eight-pointer Ryland? It was a seven or eight-pointer, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the same size deer, basically, as Ryland's, you know. And uh, so we took a picture anyways, and... Yeah, so it's fun to it is, interact yeah. with all the guys and see Rocky's deer. Yeah, that thing was long, 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 and the, yeah. the neck was about this big. Yeah, huh? jeez. Yeah, it was a nice buck. That was a real nice. Bo shot a beautiful, beautiful buck. Yeah, too. Yeah, I didn't. Did you see Bo's buck? I just just the picture. Oh, he yeah. did. I didn't even see it. I just happened nope. to see his name on the list. Yeah. I didn't beautiful even know he rack. got one. Yeah. yeah. Nice deer. A lot of yeah, a lot of nice ones. It oh. is, but I mean that the, there was one video. Um, I forget the channel, but uh, the guy did a super job making the film. It was, it was. Uh, he shot it. It was GoPro footage, and he got the he got the deer running and actual got it on film shooting it. And then he went back and got his family and brought his wife and kids out and oh nice really nice really yeah. well done film that was really good i wish that i could was. remember who it was because i'd i'd like to give him some yeah credit sure. on that i didn't see but, that one i've been um, kind of off grid most of the month anyway i yeah. don't have time to look at i just happened to see that the other day that was well done yeah super really and, and his wife was he helping. quartered it up too he cut the deer up and packed it out instead yeah. of dragging it yeah where was built it? a fire where was it at for some reason, I think it was up north, like maybe Allagash or something. Yeah. It oh, yeah. It might have been because it seems to me I've seen them in another video, and they were fishing up there, up up in the Allagash. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. They've made other videos. I'm, but really well done. That was really good, yeah. yeah. But it is. I mean, it's it's just videos like that, They it it brings out the the, the main tradition and, you yeah, know, northeast sure. tradition, you know. and. His lifestyle. wife was helping him pack the meat and oh, throw, it was, throwing it, was it up great. on the sh- Yeah, it yeah. was cool. Yeah. Yeah, so really, and there's just a lot of that now, yeah. you know. I mean, it's it's uh, it's getting easier and easier for people to do it with the technology, with the cameras and stuff, and right. things that we could never capture before, people are able to capture now. Our buddy Joe there from carol plantation what's his last name osgood yeah he's oh, making yeah. videos yeah Joe, joe's been doing that yeah <laughs> joe is super man he's, yeah, he's yeah. a great guy he doesn't have to kill a thing if he just gets on there and talks it's yeah. a great video <laughs> him, and his, him and his two young boys it's funny they yeah. do all the stuff they do he actually yeah he came up here for uh last week for muzzleloader right he stayed here and, and hunted out of here but yeah his channel is fbm yep fbm outdoors fbm outdoors yeah and uh, yeah, he had a video of the buck bus. Yeah, <laughs> the buck bus already. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, they got, then the Hainesville boys, they got they're doing some pretty good videos there. You seen those? He, he got a nice buck the first. I think it was the first day. The they, it's uh, Hainesville something. Oh yeah. yeah. Like I said, I haven't watched him. I I've been I gonna. This winter, I'm going to catch up on some of that stuff. But all I had about enough time to do during deer season is answer emails, messages, texts, yeah, and uh, go to bed. Yeah, I, I do. Good. Yeah, me. <laughs> I eat supper and I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. My sons call me at like 
seven thirty, and they go, "Oh, I'm sorry, Dad, I called you so late." <laughs> 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 Cam has to report in every day, you know. Yeah. I said, "You better call early." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess well, that's all. Uh, uh, Remington plant. Did you want to talk about that? Oh that yeah, matters. somebody. Yeah, I've been seeing. I did see that that uh, the Remington plant in Illion is closing up, and they're going to move all their operations to that plant in Georgia that they they had bought. The new owners had bought that a year, I think, a year or so ago. But so that's going to be the end of a tradition down there. But I've heard they've. I think they've got several offers on the building they want to do this different people interested in the building to do other stuff uh, so maybe whatever they do there maybe the uh the employees can somehow get their jobs there or something but yeah that's the that's, part that sucks and all that yeah, the employees are the ones that end up on the short end of the stick and yeah you, you can't blame i mean you gotta you gotta think is it political too just the way new york is with there's no guns question and, it is. There's no question. So, they're, they're running all the gun companies out of there. You know, you feel for the employees. You you understand why they have to do it, the whole thing. So hopefully someone yeah. else will pick it up. Where, Well, I knew from experience working there that it was, it was, uh, it was hard to compete in that facility because it was an antiquated facility, and it cost like 60% more to produce a gun there. So you're, you think about that. You're going in the gun market with all the competition. You're already at a sixty percent disadvantage. That's that's a lot. Nah, yeah. So, yeah, I could see the writing on the wall. I I've been pretty much predicting that for quite some time ever since I've been since I'd left there. I'm like they're not when the new owners bought it in that last bankruptcy. I'm like they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to do nothing there because they got to get back on the feet begin with you know and yeah so hopefully they'll produce some guns down in georgia and maybe they'll bring back the 7600 we'll see never know all right well it's been a good conversation guys joe you all right yeah i'm good are you why are you kicking me <laughs> am i kicking you <laughs> yeah. you'd know it if i was kicking you mike <laughs> <laughs> He's got nervous. Just rest, just rest nervous in my foot. I'm getting. You got a pee? Either. We've been here for an hour and a half. Getting I'm getting a pee. <laughs> yeah. <Right>. Jumpy. <laughs> Ryland, you got anything else to say? Yeah, come on, Ryland. Mr. Talkative, fill us in. What's going on? Anyway? I think I already did. Any good school gossip or anything you want to spread around? Just. He's homeschooling. Yeah. Yeah. That's I know even better. He's probably got gossip about <laughs> his mother then. Every time. Any gossip about school is in good gossip. <laughs> Ryan. Ryan. So, I know that every time I saw you this past summer, you'd be riding your bike and there'd be some good looking girl walking with you. And it was never the same one. What? You, you got it going on with the girls in town, huh? Why aren't you having a ride in your handlebars? You're making them walk? He's got a fishing pole you and a bike. You gotta get up there and, and balance them old school. <laughs> <laughs> you got a bike, a fishing pole, and a good-looking blonde walking beside you. Every, every time I saw you, yeah. <clears throat> not, not always a fishing pole, but <laughs> yeah. We always get on this subject sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're old and jealous. We just. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah. All right. On that note, we better go. So, everybody have a Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year and all of that. And looking forward to uh, good things next year. Is this the last one before Christmas? I don't know. Is no, I think we're going to have one more. But anyway, all right. Merry Christmas anyway. Yeah, yeah, we can say that early. I meant to wear my Santa hat today. Yeah. Hal rush me. He was asleep when I went to get him in his chair. Mm. At, actually, I was in the bedroom. In the bed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 11 o'clock in the morning, he's in sleeping. I was catching up on my reading. Yeah. Dog. All right. Till next time. Good luck on the trail. Hi, everyone. Team member Mark Sheeran here. I've been helping people solve their addictions for the last 34 years. In 2017, we published the revolutionary non 12 step book the freedom model for addictions if you'd like a free paperback copy sent directly to you go to freebook.freedommodel.org that's 
freebook.freedommodel.org. All right, take care. Hey guys, Joe here. Wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Lake Parlin Lodge. We're a uh, four-season lodge located just south of Jackman. We've got cabins, lodge rooms, mini lodge. We're a big snowmobile destination in the winter, full restaurant, bar, all the amenities that you need for your trip. Open all obviously through the summer right on the lake. Kayaks, canoes all included with the cabin. We also do a lot of weddings, so if you're looking for a destination wedding, we can do a wedding up to 200 people. And, uh, of course, we've got our hunting season, moose season, deer season. So check us out. We're at lakeparlinlodge.com. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Till next time, good luck on the trail.